Hey everybody and welcome back to Wanderby Outdoors. This is your disclaimer. As what is written in the title, this is a squirrel skinning and processing video. We're going to skin it, we're going to clean it, and I'm going to show you how to turn it into pieces of meat that you can actually use. Now if that would offend you or you don't want to see it, feel free to stop watching right now. However, if you stick around, it's a skinning video. You're going to see entrails, you're going to see blood. Boo and I went out this morning for a quick hunt and we managed to get one decent squirrel. So let's dive in. Now there's several ways to do this. I know there are ways that guys use where they slice below the tail, they step on the tail and they pull the hide that way. That is not one of the ways I'm gonna show you. And the reason is if you fish, I will include a link in the description and in that link you can take the prepared squirrel tails send them into maps which is a well-known fishing lure company and you can get cash credit for the squirrel tails you send them and turn it back into fishing lures so save your tails through the season in february march whenever whenever your season's up send them all into maps get yourself back some decent spinners take your freshly harvested squirrel Right at the base of the tail and a good sh Can you be careful? Right at the base of the tail and a good sharp knife. You're gonna cut off the tail right at the base. Try and find a joint if you can. You can also use a set of hand pruners and just lop it off that way. You're gonna cut that tail cut it the whole way around until it comes off. Normally you can find a joint if you pull it back up towards the back. Okay, got your tail off, shake the hair off. Now to prepare these to send in two ways. One, take that nub, dip it in borax really well, or dip it in table salt if you don't have borax. Either lay them flat to dry, or just hang them with a staple or a stainless steel thumbtack, hang them vertically and let them dry that way. They have to be completely dry. They will not take them if they're shedding off any fur, if they're missing fur, or if they're rotting. Once we have the tail off, we're gonna come right in the center of the back. We're gonna pinch up the skin in the back, take our knife, we're gonna run the knife under that pinch and pierce it. We're gonna make a slit big enough to get our fingers into. You can go one way, flip the squirrel, and go the other way. Now one of the keys to this is a good sharp knife, so if your knife isn't sharp, sharpen it. Once you have that little hole, you're gonna put your fingers in on both sides and you're going to work them in under the skin. This is going to be your handle. Once you can get your fingers in under there, you are going to pull one direction and then the other. If you can't get it and pull this way, you can tie off the front legs, pull down, then tie off the rear legs and pull down towards the head. So you get in underneath and you're just going to peel and pull. Now, when you get around to the belly, you may have to use, do a little bit of knife work on the belly to get it to go completely around. <laughs> and it doesn't Why? always go straight. Why? Get around if you work the skin away from the belly in both directions and then take your knife slide in between the skin and the abdomen and just cut the skin 
that does make it a little easier. Now. Keep peeling it down, peel it down over the back legs, <laughs> the whole way down. Step back a little bit. Okay. Down past where the joint is. This is the joint where it bends at his ankle where you're gonna take it off. For the top portion, work it down over the front legs and over the head. This one I harvested with a 22 so you don't have all the pellet penetration wounds that you would with a shotgun. Work the legs, work it up to where you got it at the head. And what we're gonna do once you've got a full joint bend, again, two ways you can do it. You can take it off with a knife at the joint if you're comfortable doing that. Or if not, take a pair of hand pruners or kitchen shears and simply cut it off there at the joint. Once you got the front paws free, take in at the neck and you're basically scoring the meat the whole way around. Once it's scored to where it'll come off. manipulate this one a little bit. This one was a, a high head shot. Step back, please. There. Once it's off, remove that. Dispose of it properly. For the back legs again, use a knife. You can bend it at the joint, come in behind and it takes a couple times to figure out how to get these apart at the joint. So if you're more comfortable, just take a pair of kitchen shears and just cut it off. One back leg. Second back leg, when you're doing this, make sure you're careful and don't cut yourself. It's easy to slip doing this if you've never done it. Now with that done, lay him on his back, belly up. We're gonna take our knife right at the middle section of the pelvis. This one was a female. We're gonna go down, cut in towards the pelvis. Um, if you are not good with your knife skills, do not cut towards your hand lay this on a cutting board or a hard surface and do it that way to keep your hand out of the way. So we cut down and then we're going to simply crack the pelvis open. If it doesn't come open, go up in from the underside, give it a little pop, it will come open. Once the pelvis is open, follow that center line the whole way up. Keep following it up through the ribs. Now here you can either use your knife or get your kitchen shears back out and come up and split up as best you can through the center of the rib cage. All the way up, we're gonna completely open this carcass and open it up. Now once you have your carcass opened up, couple things you'll notice. You do have a heart. It is in a membrane sac, so just score the top just a little bit to remove it from that sac. We're going to pull it off. Keep that if you like. I do like them. The other thing you'll notice once you get it open, you do have the stomach and you have the liver. Now, this is a nice healthy looking liver. If you have any type of major spotting on the liver or it's a color other than this, uh, I don't even know how to explain it, a, almost a real deep 
dark brownish red. If it's any color other than that, you're gonna wanna do some research before you eat it. I would stop at that point, do some research, or if you decide not to eat it because it's discolored, then just dispose of it properly. You can keep the liver if you want. Most of the time with squirrels, I do not keep liver, but if you do want to, just find where it attaches in. And remove the liver from the rest of the entrails. A lot of times with the liver, I will grab them with just by hand and pull them out and then that's a dog treat. Now, come back in, you can start at the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter, it's all personal preference. Grab everything that's down in there. You wanna make sure you get the esophagus, the windpipe, the lungs, everything down through and pull it down and out. Just keep pulling as you go down through. Once we get to the sink and the water, we're gonna clean it up completely. Come down through, keep pulling everything down out. Be careful when you get down to the bottom, that's where your bladder and your exit pipe is. Spread it open. Clean all this out. Now, several things you can do from this point, you can keep it whole like this. Um, you will need to come up and take any hair follicles off of the legs. If you wanna cook it whole or stuff it with a rice or a quinoa, you can keep it whole if you wanna grill it or do it on a fire or in a pot, you just wanna keep it whole. You can keep it whole, rinse it out, clean it out real good, get rid of any bloodshot, anything like that. If you used a shotgun, go through and feel, look for pellet entries, get rid of those lead pellets if you were using a lead pellet. Um, get rid of any pellet really because they hurt your teeth. Once you're done there, if you are keeping it whole, come into the legs, the back legs, and if you open it like a goalpost on the inside joint of both back legs, on a, in the inside of the knee, you're going to want to follow, this one looks better. You'll see a light portion here and where the muscle groups meet. You're gonna to wanna to follow that with your knife and open this up. And the reason you're gonna open this up is because inside this back leg, is a gland and that gland you don't want to eat. So just open it up once you get down in there you'll see it. It's a little ball or oblong shaped gland. It's right here. Get rid of that. You do not want that. That may make the difference between somebody liking the flavor of squirrel and not liking the flavor of squirrel. Now, normally I do mine, I quarter them down. And once I have them quartered down, then I get rid of this gland when I'm dealing with just an individual leg and not a whole carcass. Since I'm doing it this way, I don't know how you guys want to cook them. So I'm showing you right now. You can go in, just kind of peel it off with a thumb or a finger and it will come right off. Once you have that done, if you're going to keep it whole, come up in underneath the armpit, under both armpits in the front, as you open this up, lift his arm up, You'll see where the muscle groups meet, kind of open it up again. And down inside the arm, 
you're going to find this brownish looking substance. It's soft, it's not hard like the backlight gland. Again, it's another type of gland that's in the squirrel. Come in with your knife, come underneath it, and take that out of there. Once again, that may make the difference. There it is, peeled back. That may make the difference of somebody liking the taste of squirrel and not liking the taste of squirrel. Um, if you're going to quarter your squirrel instead of using it whole, you can do the same thing, but what you're gonna do is come in underneath, you'll feel the shoulder blade, come back against the rib cage, and you're gonna work this off right along the rib cage, go way up towards the neck. I prefer mine quartered, it's all personal preference. We're going to work off that chunk of meat. There is a little section of arm bone there. Cut it or find it and go around it. And bring it all the way up along the neck. Now, once you open it up like that when it's quartered, you can see very easily this brownish tannish gland. Again, with your fingers or with a knife, get in underneath it, and get all that out of there. You do not want that. If you're going to quarter it, instead of eating it whole, take both front legs off like that for the back legs. And I, like I said, I prefer mine quartered. Make your goal post with the back legs, open it up. Go right down in along the tailbone, and then you're going to pop that down. Once you get that popped down, you're going to fold it down against the body. You feel the bone right here, the pelvic bone. Go in underneath, cut straight towards that. Now you have your back leg quarters off. Either way, depending on how you want to cook it, there's no wrong way. Um, rib cages and this flat meat along the side. If you come in with the flap, if you're quartering it down, just take this belly flap down against the loin. Don't cut through your loin. Just take it to where it meets and cut this along the loin up to where you hit the rib. Once you hit the rib, angle down, follow the rib down to the back. Same way, follow the rib down to the back. Once you have it all the way down to the back, it's a twist just to snap that vertebrae. Once you have it snapped, finish your cut, cut your muscle tissue. Now you'll have your rib cage. Keep these. You can use them to make your soups. Same way over here, back down along the, the tailbone back of the tailbone, snap it open, come in against the side, work your way along, cutting the muscle tissue, there's your other back quarter. Now you've got a backbone section with the loin. Anything that you see that you might have missed, take that out. A lot of times this one little chunk of tailbone here, I'll just cut it off square and I'll have a section of loin. You can leave it. If you're gonna fry them, it gives you a handle to eat the rest of the loin meat off the backbone. And there is a little bit of meat here, but not much. If you're going to pressure cook it to turn it into a stew, something like that, leave all this. You want as much meat and as much bone as you can to get the flavor. I'll see you in the kitchen in a minute. Two ways to do this once you get it all clean and blood free. One is to rinse it, get all the hair and blood off of it, and then wipe it dry. You can put it in a covered bowl or in a plastic bag and dry age it. Some guys do that. 
I don't. What I do is I find a bowl big enough to fit it that I can cover the entire squirrel or batch of squirrels with water. Once I get my squirrel completely cleaned off and rinsed off, I'll take the bowl that I'm gonna use for it and we'll put in a couple of tablespoons of salt and hit it with cold water. Now what this is gonna do is sitting overnight in the fridge, it's gonna take all the blood and the slime and the junk out of the meat and the cold from the fridge will help break down the muscle tissue. I brine my small game. You can dry age it and just clean it off, dry it off, throw it in the fridge in, a, in an airtight container and let it sit overnight that way. The big thing is you wanna get all the body heat out of the meat and let the muscle tissue relax. Cold water, we're just rinsing off all the hair. This is also if you use a shotgun where you want to sit and feel and make sure you got all the pellets out. As you're going down through, if you find a pellet, just make a hole, use your knife point, lay it down, make a hole, find that pellet, dig that out of there. So what helps to get rid of the bloodshot is to cut into the meat, the depth or slightly deeper than the bloodshot, cut in one way, rotate it, and cut in the opposite way. This opens that up, it makes a cross hatch almost and that'll get rid of any bloodshot. Now this one was not bad. Well, continue washing off real well. Try to get as much of the hair, any blood, any slime, anything you don't want to eat. This is when you're taking your time. Take your time with it. You spent the time in the woods to hunt it. You spent the time to bring it back and skin it. Take your time and clean it up. It'll taste better. Rib cage. Again, just washing the meat off, or yeah, washing the meat off, get any blood up out of it. Um, if you do any major bone damage, if you want, remove that small section where you did major damage. There. Damage gone. Get all the hair off. Anything you don't want to eat. Again, if you're eating at whole, you do have this side flap meat. There is an outer covering on the ribs you can eat. And you can peel the meat back from the bones. If you're going to use it for a pot pie or a soup or making like squirrel noodles with it, you want to keep these because this is extra meat and it's also extra bone for your broth. Back legs. Get down in there where you pulled that gland out, rinse that out real good, run your thumb or your finger down in through there and then open it up and look and make sure you got it all. You can have, you're going to have these white tendons, but you shouldn't have any nodule looking things or anything brownish or colored other than, you know, the red or the pink of the meat or the white tendon. This backbone loin area, make sure when you're working down in this cavity that you didn't miss anything from your entrails. You're going to have these white stringy looking things. That's pieces of tendon. Um, some guys will remove this silver skin from the back. I usually leave it. It'll break down in the pressure cooker and if I'm going to deep fry it, it'll just peel off anyway. If you dry age it, that'll actually get hard and you can peel it off pretty easy. Now the heart. You're just gonna kind of squeeze it and get rid of anything that's left over in it, running it under the water. Fill it, squeeze it, get rid of any blood clots or anything that may have formed. Now, pointy ends to bottom. 
at the top up here. I usually come in. And just take the very top piece off. Cut it square down with the heart there. That opens it up a little bit. You can save them if you want them. I like them. The kids like them. These never get wasted here. Same way with the liver. If you want to eat the liver, eat the liver. Just clean it up good, throw it in your brine mix, and you're good to go. Once you've got it all washed, thrown in your bowl and covered with water, with your light salt water brine in it, throw it in your fridge. We'll leave it overnight. You can leave it three, four, five days. If you're not gonna use it by day four or day five at the most, you wanna freeze it. So let it sit in the brine overnight, 24 hours, pull it out, rinse the salt off, dry it completely, pack it into vacuum bags and freeze it that way. Or if you have a way that you prefer to freeze it, freeze it however you normally do. I prefer to dry it, vacuum pack it. It'll last for a good year in the freezer like that if you take care of it and vacuum pack it. Like I said at the beginning, the main reason of doing this video is so that I can take any of our hunting, small game hunting videos and link back to this for somebody that doesn't know how to do it. To do it in another video, it just takes time, adds time onto it. I would rather have a how-to video that you can come back to and look at just the skinning and cleaning and quartering portion of. Thanks for watching. Give us a like if you liked it. Remember to subscribe for all our future adventures, and we'll see you on the next one.